Golight presents the Talking Bollocks Podcast. The hip knocker. So, Tordy, 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 Talking Bollocks podcast. There we go. <laughs> it's me, COB. It's me, Tardy Flower. And today we're joined by... Huey Mon. Yeah. Who said Martin? Martin. What way? What way? Mon. 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 Huey Martin, no? Well, whatever way you, you can call me, whatever you want to call me. Oh, don't call me in the morning, call didn't it? You, you, you want to start flirting with us now, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Whatever you just want to call me. So what way is it? We don't want to insult you. You're not, just call me Huey. I've been, I'm a gay traveller. I've been called a lot worse in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the Hubert so, fella. I'm going to call you Hubert from call now on. Call me Hubert. I, when I was on Big Brother, Hubert was a nice one and Hugh Dog. Well, no, sorry, Hugh Dog was a nice one and Hubert was an argumentative one. So you can call me Hubert if you so want. So Hubert will get away with that? Yeah. Hugh, you, wanna... you talking to kind of thing. Is <laughs> right, it? Okay. So yeah, Hugh, Hughie Mon. 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 That's how it rolls off the tongue. It's one Doesn't syllable. it bollocks, man? They're dragging <laughs> that from the back. Actually, no, uh, Mon. It rolls off the tongue. Mon. <laughs> We're sticking with Martin, yeah? Right, Huey right. Martin. Huey <laughs> Martin. Right, come on, man. Yeah, right. killing us, yeah. Right. So, right, kick us off, Terence. Go on. Jumping into the jingles from last week, yeah? Huey, did you see you guys go at a wedding? Someone throw coins. You ever see that years ago? No. At when the brother at a wedding, at a traveller's wedding, somebody normally throws chairs or glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure on the kind situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know when the bride and groom, when they get married, they walk to the front of the church and they throw coins out, no? Have you never seen that? No, it's such a, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Have you never, is this just a Dublin thing? Because the, well, you know from the Dublin. we got of people saying that they've never seen it before. And the people from the country. I thought that was us. other religions like Indian people or something, like to give to Trump. I don't know. No, down the flats and all. They throw <laughs> down the flats. Yeah, no, yeah. Right. They used to do that down the flats because the, the bride and groom be on the balcony and they throw coins over and yeah. all the kids would mill each other. Well, anyways. Yeah. So it's maybe like we're giving you his money. Is it, or is it luck? Or is it luck? I think it's a right, good luck okay, thing. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, anyways, Calvin said, is it a grushy or a gushy? Right? It, we used to call it a grushy. It's a grushy. Like you throw the money out, it's called a grushy. A like, grushy. Yeah, 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 a yeah. Grushy. that's what it's called, and the coins get flowing. Right, okay then. Yeah. Right. right? But, anyways, a grushy, 50. How close is that? 51% to 49? That is very close, yeah. A grushy or a cushy? No, a grushy or a gushy. So take the R out. So a lot of people called it a grushy. But is there a reason why it's called that? What oh, is no grush? Idea. No, no idea. No idea. No idea. Do you never even, with the ice cream man years ago, we yeah. throw stuff out and it's a grushy. The ice cream no, man used to do no. it as well, but in fairness... I'm not, how can I be from Dublin? I don't I know, it's sorry, no, yeah, sorry about um, the yogurt fella. <laughs> the corner man, well, that's another thing. We used to call him the corner man, the ice cream man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah do you yeah. ever used to do that? The Co- corner man, no, just corner. Corner, like a corner, it was an ice cream, the cone. A cone, a cone. Yeah, yeah but they're called cornets. No, I don't, I don't know any of these things. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to take this podcast on a big twist now. The, the corner man where I live used to do one, yeah, but it turned out it used to be a pedophile then. So <gasps> that's yeah. why he was doing it. I know <laughs> what exactly, I, mean? I know exactly who you're on about, but uh, I'll sh- say you do. But anyway, go ahead. Scruffy. Took a different, took the wrong turn there. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Glushy and Gushy, 51 for Glushy, 49 for Gushy, yeah. And then, do you watch football now? Not really. When I want to power from the lads, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> power from the power from the. But uh, Ronaldo and Messi was the zing of last week then, yeah. and there was slaughter over this. Yeah. It was better than Ronaldo or Messi. You I think Ronaldo's a better player, but that's because it's so famous. Yeah. Go on, dude. We'll take that. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. he's more Listen. famous. He's more probably legendary, is he not? There's uh, more uh, people in the world opinion. not know who he is. Yeah, I'd say, I'd, I'd say everywhere, everywhere in the world you go, people know who Messi is as well. Right. I've yeah. seen pictures of Leighton. Even people that's not a huge... Fo- well, I'm not a huge football fan at all, and I know who he is. But I've seen mm. pictures of, like, villages bombed in Afghanistan and kids wandering around with Messi jerseys on. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, seen it. But Ronaldo's the first... Where did they get jerseys over there when they don't even have food? They get sent over to they them They get them sent all. over, like... Oh. But uh, Ronaldo was the first uh, person on social media to hit 300 million followers on anything, I think. He's the most followed person on Instagram, and I think second is Kylie Jenner in there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then, that's incredible. And then what you're probably taught, and then yeah, you. Yeah, we heard Ballymun to Ballymun Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No, but imagine that 300 million, and we, what have we got in Ireland? 5 million people? Yeah. If even, yeah. 
That's why I'm not sitting there. That's incredible. Yeah, think about it like that. But That's anyways, incredible. yeah, everyone was like, I didn't agree with it. Everyone was roasting Ronaldo. Everyone was yeah. like, oh, all these playing kids on this and stuff like that. How can you say that he's the all-time leading goal scorer ever? Yeah. yeah. Ever, like, do you know what I mean? The most goals in history the cunt has. And people are saying, oh, they're just... Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and these are saying, oh, these are just United fans. So I, I'm a Liverpool fan. I, did, I think Ronaldo was better. But it's arguable. Like, Wait, it's it's one of those things that's like, in England, do you know, like, um, like a bap? Like, yeah. the, like a seedless bun almost only way I can describe it like a bat would you call know, it a bat yeah, in England they either call them a batch a barm cake a bap is this your zinger this is your zinger this is you zinger it's one of those things that causes so many arguments right so it's what like, so go on right us, so in England right? no break it down you, you have to call it one or the other what do you call it a bap or oh I'd always call it a bap obviously as opposed to what so it well, one part of England to call it a barm cake, which well, well, makes no go. sense. It's so not that's, a cake. That, that's your zinger then. Then is the other people call it a batch. Then other people call it a bap. I thought people called it a bap or a bun. Is that not what yeah. it is? A, a, a bread a cake, some mm. people call it. Sure and it's that. one of those things that causes so many arguments because everyone's like, no, it's this, no, it's that. But it's a bap, isn't it, really? Let's right, be honest. So that's your zinger for this week. Yeah, but in Ireland, everyone calls it a bath. Yeah, well then, right, we'll put, we'll, right, so, you, he doesn't watch or listen to the podcast, everybody, yeah? <laughs> As you can tell. As you can <laughs> tell. So give me a camera to look at, I'm going to look at this one. <laughs> uh, and I told him, heroes were a zinger, and he goes, oh, I won't, I don't know, I don't know, and then we had to come out with one off the cuff, he didn't is even mean it. Is it a bap, or is it a barm cake? Let's there call we it go. that. Well, there we go. There we go. Give us the results go of the Messi to the other Ronaldo. One. Ronaldo, 57%, Messi, 43%, yeah? So, Still close enough, don't finish. It is close enough, but I actually thought Messi was going to win it. Yeah. But anyways, that's that one done. <laughs> Out of the way, Calvin, what's your zinger for the week? Give us your one, because you said you have... I don't a... have one, I'm struggling, right? And is Huey a top or a bottom? Oh! <laughs> There's a zinger for the win. Good luck. <laughs> Who is he <laughs> flirting with? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> um, There's a zinger for the win. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can message me the result. That's what you can do. <laughs> is Huey a postman or the post box? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But my zinger for the week, I was struggling. Calvin gave me one that's requested so much. When you're brushing your teeth, you'll be, do you use hot water or cold water? Right, if I have a... Well, I do have a proper option. Jesus Christ, I'm living in civilization. It's somewhere kind of in the middle. Because I've got fake teeth, they're not always as sensitive as they used to be, but my gums still are. So if I use really cold water or really hot water, it's really sore. So I do kind of somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. I don't get... Like, a lot of people message us and say, oh, do this one, do this one. But I don't get... Who the fuck uses hot water to brush their teeth? I use warm water to brush my teeth. Yeah, look, wait, that'd be No, cold, Jesus though, Christ. Like, if I had a, now, if I was in a rush, I wouldn't give a flying, f like, whatever. Come here, you have two have taps in the sink, though. You, you're not going to turn on the no, hot tap. No, no, my one is one of those ones that, like, swivels between, and you can go in like, halfway. Yeah, but I'd, yeah, you wouldn't put it on hot, though. You wouldn't be fucking boiling no, the kettle Jesus to brush your teeth. No, Jesus Christ, obviously not. I heard you're supposed to brush your teeth with a little warm water. Yeah, because it receives your gums. Because I said this to a few people that was going to use this thing. And is this your little fact you were going to drop this, on? I this promise is the little you, fact you're you're your, your gums are sick. I've got Wait, fake teeth. The two years ain't the head on me. We get it, the two years went to Tokyo and got you some teeth. Have you got fake ones as well? There we go. A lot of white shows. I'm bleeding that needs sunglasses sitting there between the two years. I'm going to have mine changed because they asked faded a bit I think or I don't know if that's just all in my head yeah. I don't know you, I wanted to have them read out I always name. think that but with my fake teeth yeah. when I'm looking at my mom saying they're bleeding yellow now you're not meant to brush your teeth with um, cold water or really hot water because it can um, it recedes your gums sound yeah I don't even want to smile in this podcast so there you now, go so between the two years yeah, <laughs> well, no, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the dentist now so it's yeah. fine well you must get a bleeding referral bonus do you you must yeah. check out cold Yui Martin 15 I check out 15% <laughs> off is it fuck right. off oh, will you Oh, and you'd want to get a fucking fan in here as well, by the way. The heat in this room. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're warm, you. No, I'm sound. Oh, All right, now, well, so I'm wet and sitting here. So what's your one? Do you brush that's your teeth with hot or cold water? Hot or cold water. Right, so that's that's his one. Uh, my one this week is my sister going to me. Right, give a shout out to my sister, Melissa. It was her birthday there. Um, the other day? I can't remember what Same day it was. Same with Happy belated birthday. Happy you. belated to you, you. What? Get happy 24, Yui. 27. 27, 27. now. And he said he's getting old. Yeah. Of course, I'm getting old. I'm on the wrong side of, of the twenties. I'm 27. Yeah, but you look 21. So that's fine. Oh, you you look 21. Oh, you got good oh, Botox. So that's yeah, fine. Good Botox, yeah, yeah. Great Botox. It's a good corporation ward on the flats. Yeah. Is it? That's what that is. Yeah. Simple. Oh, simple. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was her birthday, so she sent me a load of zingers and all. So 
they weren't the best, but I said I'll use this one because there is a good one, and this is my birthday present to her, yeah? Yeah. So she said, would you rather skydive or do a bungee jump? Oh, God, skydive any day of the week. It's <gasps> a bungee what? jump. What's a bungee jump? Do you know where you're tied on? Like, usually you do it off a bridge, where you're tied on, you jump. Oh! You or would you rather <laughs> skydive? You jump out of a fucking plane. Do you know anyone who chooses either of them, I really question them. They shouldn't be allowed to vote. Like, they're never seen something wrong with them. <laughs> like, anyone who does... Why would you ever willingly throw yourself out of a plane? We did it. I, normally, when people throw themselves out of things, like, they get sectioned. <laughs> so, like, why would you ever... Oh, like, did it. Oh, you're so pleased. Did you never do it? Why would you ever want a bungee jump? No, well, no I've never done a bungee jump. I've done a skydive. I'm wearing on I think it's childish as well, but people... People crave an adrenaline rush. So they'll do Lads, anything I don't for drink it. or do drugs. What do you expect me to do? Yeah, but you're jumping out of a fucking plane, yeah, man. But you know what? Skydiving may because you're so high up to like, the clouds. I'm really trying to be really positive and think that maybe you can't see anything yet until you're gone and there's somebody with you. But the bungee jump thing, like off the sides of like cliffs and like big buildings, it's like, what's wrong with you? Mm. Yeah. We don't see the woman just sat in the chair and they get threw off on the chair and yeah, the legs. Yeah, let's go crack. Oh. oh no, no! Did you ever see them videos where we're coming running across buildings and jumping? And oh, and I can't watch them. Oh, I can't the watch them. The fucking knees and all the be happy. Yeah. But we did the skydive a few years ago, twenty fourteen. It was shout out the Reds. I know Reds will be listening in Australia. We did it with him, me, him, and we board. Uh, we did it in California, right? So wow. we signed up to do it. You can do twelve thousand, fifteen thousand, or eighteen thousand feet. And 18,000 is the, the highest you can jump from. Yeah. So we said, hell, if we're going to do it. And you, you yeah, because it doesn't well really make a out. difference. I mean, 12,000 feet. Yeah, 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 you hit the anyways. deck, you're going to die. But it makes a difference because if you're, you're falling, if you jump from 18,000 feet, you're falling for 90 seconds before the parachute opens. And is that a long time? What? Before the parachute opens. Before the parachute opens. Oh, 90 yes. seconds. <gasps> so a minute and a half. Oh, and you then could they open the parachute. Attack, couldn't you? So uh, we did it, right? And we rock up to this place and you're sitting in the hangar and they put the fucking the harness and all on you and they, they measure you and they weigh you because your weight has to match with the person that's going to be strapped here. So they they measure me or whatever and this little board is going to deal with me. So this little board comes out of nowhere. She's like, oh, I'm going to be strapped onto you. And I was like, she I give her a jockey back, you know what I mean? She's tiny. Like. So uh, we're sitting there and we're getting ready and we're sitting in the hangar and the plane's fueling up, ready to go. And that song comes on there, uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Oh, and I was sitting there thinking, like, the all the fucking songs to play. So uh, it's grand. It pours on the coach out to get on the plane and you're sitting on it. But it, it's a small plane. Yeah, and it's, it's like, like them little white yokes. Piney yokes, yeah. So it's a bench on each side, right? And when you're walking, your one's on me back and she's like, you need to walk with me. So she's like, right foot, left foot, and I want like that. And we sit down on the bench and you're facing forward, sitting on this bench, right? And uh, the, the plane takes off forever. And it's a little shutter door. It's not a proper door. It's like literally a little shutter. And your man opens her up. And he shouts, door's open. And he dives out. And I was like, he's gone. I was like, he's just gone. <laughs> I was like, this man literally just opens it on. Yeah. Like, and he just jumped. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? So then uh, my board was next to go. And I'm looking. And your man just walks. And they jump. And they're gone. And your man's like, right, come on, it's our turn. And I was like... There's no way I'm jumping out of this plane. Like, you're walking towards that door and everything in your head is saying, turn back, like, is what are you doing? Is it genuinely like that? Is your heart yeah. just... Everything, every instinct in your body is saying, what are you doing, you stupid cunt? Just turn around, just stop. And I was like, there's not a chance I'm jumping out of this plane. And I, won't, I said to you, I won't, uh, is it too late to turn back? And she started laughing. She goes, oh, no, you're, you're going out of this plane whether I throw you over or not. And I was like, fuck, oh, like... No. So, we're walking up to the door, yeah, and I'll close my eyes and I'm, I can feel you, I won't push me. And I was saying to myself, no, fuck that, I'm at to come on all this way, It'd be stupid not to look, you know what I mean? And uh, before you, you go, your man says to you, right, when you jump out of the plane, don't look uh, down, look around you. If you want to look at the ground, go on to Google Maps, he says. You know, like that? So uh, we jumped and I remember looking and you can't hear the thing because you're falling. All you can hear is like, <laughs> Yeah, because you're going that fast, how can you even you see anything? Hear, you can't hear the thing. And you get cotton milk because you're going that fast. And the, the thrill of it is unreal. And I'm looking around, you're above the clouds. Then you go through the clouds. And then uh, you look down and you're going to see these things popping up. And that's the people who jump before you. Their parachutes are opening. But it's the best feeling in the <laughs> Do you world, not flip like. or do you just you keep can, Yeah, they do, they do flips with you. And then they pull the parachute and you can hear everything then. And it's just dead silent. And I won't start and she's like, yeah, right, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, that was fucking lethal. Oh and she's doing like tricks with the parachute and all, like, you know, twirling you, making you go up zero gravity and all. Like, they pull the parachute and you go up in the air like that. 
And like in them How cubes, many times a year would she do that? She does something like six times a day. A day? Yeah. No. She's gonna hit the ground and go out with the next group. That's wow. no. But do you know when you're doing that, like you're, you're weightless and zero gravity and all this shit, and you're going down and you're looking all around you and the view's unbelievable. And then it only clicked in my head, you know, when you're getting closer to the ground, you're still about 100 feet in the air. It's like, if something went wrong now, you're, you're still, still bollocks. Die. You're still dying. You're still going to still die. die. You have to come from 18,000 feet. Imagine and dying then you in the last 100. And then you that still feels really high up, I think. Yeah, and then you hit the ground and you're like, that was fucking unreal. I'll do that again, no problem. I'm yet to do a bungee jump and I think I would do one. I'd, no, I'd don't. Love to do one. You don't need to. Just go on a roller coaster. You don't need to do We're that. We're on roller coasters, you eat. It's going a really high one. I've done really yeah. high roller coasters. I've done, I've done really high ones, done really fast ones. I've done loop de loops a lot. so fun. Gone backwards and all. I love roller coasters. Hate water slides, though. And I'm never going to force myself Why? to do Why can you swim? Try it. I'm really, really good at swimming. Sorry, I'm, I'm really, really good at swimming, but I just don't like water slides. And I just think, what's the point of me even doing them? When I'm not, I'm not enjoying it. I don't need to do it just because. Oh, I went on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you I, tried them before? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done like the really high ones and all abroad, and I've just hated them. And just them. not into them. Hated it. Like I've do, I do like the average ones, but now when you go to like a water park and there's like that highest one, it's just yeah. like that. I, I just but there's no point on that water park if you're not going to go down the slides. Let's be real. No, I go I go on all like the uh, normal slides, yeah. but, but that's still high up and you're in those like dinghies, whatever else. I do all of that, yeah. but I just don't like those huge water slides that people get a trill from. No, the ones that's like Shh, and then you're out. Yeah, but that's the point. People get a trill over. I don't like. I like the other ones that are a bit you don't of an get adventure. Trill I like the adventure. Oi, well, let's that out of the way, anyways. Well, we've, 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 we've settled that one. Yeah. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Right, a couple of topics. Uh, before we deal with that, actually, we have a little frame there. Oh, uh, yeah, so... This is from J-O-S Prince on Instagram. She sent these out to us, and we thought we'd show you. Joe's Prince. Oh, is Instagram, it? Yeah. J-O-S, no? no? J-O apostrophe I'm at that yes. butchering, that's already about that. No, it's Joe's Prince on Joe's Instagram. Prince. We always said that uh, we'd hang this up in the studio but we've nowhere to hang her up so really give me that camera. I love it give me a camera there <laughs> look at this anyways yeah so that's so nice I don't know boys I'm butchering this switch the camera Jamie will ya <laughs> so that's basically <laughs> what frame. the screen looks like when you do your when you go on there on uh, Spotify pod, yeah. yeah except for the hash go loud on top of the nail yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it we said we'd give her a shout out so Joe's Prince on Instagram she done us key rings as well and she does a fuck off load of stickers yeah. uh, for talking bollocks give her a shout out I love that. Right, well, that's that one done. Um, Whatever you do, don't stand on it when you get up. I won't. Oh, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> Put it over there. Good man. Right, couple of topics of suggestion. Uh, something that hasn't come up in a few weeks that if you see me looking at my phone, boys, yeah, I'm just looking at topics of suggestions, yeah? Uh, yeah, we, uh, something we used to always ask, I guess. Yeah. We haven't asked that in a few weeks. It's a very important question. It's close very to the heart. question. It's a very serious. Yeah, well, honestly, you... Go on. <sighs> they are pissing the shower. Yeah. Of course I do. I love the honesty. Yeah, I love love the honesty. Of course I do. Yeah. I've done it this but morning. Yeah, you're dead right. You're dead right. <laughs> no, my mum's not watching this, by the way. Ooh. I'm not letting her watch it. What's wrong with her? Are you pissing the shower? <laughs> no, I am. I'm down the We're all pissing the shower. Why lie? Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's just what... I mean, you once you don't do anything else, yeah, like... Nah, I won't be showing in the yeah, shower. Yeah, no. there you go. Just because you're pissing the shower doesn't mean you can show in the back. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right, another one. Is it okay to cheer on England in the Euros? What do you think about that? One? Well, I'm not massively You're into not football. football. Yeah. Ireland's shite anyways, the yeah. team. So let's oh, yeah, be straight it. about things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, cheer them on all the way, of course. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're our neighbours. Because a lot of people, right? The patriotic, they, aren't they? I don't... Um, I, I wouldn't. I don't want England to win it, but it's not because of any reason. I'd just rather Italy or Spain win it. All oh, right, Denmark. okay, then. But... People hate on England, right? And they say, oh, England, fuck England, rats, this, that, and the other. But they'll support. And I know, right? This Man is United touchy. and all. Yeah. This is touchy, right? Because they will support English clubs. But then their argument is, there's only about four or five English players on these teams. No. But yeah, but where does the cup go to? Like, it's like the stadiums is in Manchester and Liverpool. Yeah, and but I think the thing about... The a, money goes a, there. A club Ooh. is different because clubs are based on the people in the community. So clubs are built up from working people, working class people, and in them areas like Manchester and Liverpool and other areas in England, they have Irish-based communities. So you, you know, there's, there's people out there, like they follow like a random team. Like, you know, there's a big Irish contingency for Everton 
And he'd be like, how the fuck do you follow everything? Oh, my granddad did. What happened there? Yeah, because so many Irish live people live in Liverpool, moved yeah. to Liverpool in like yeah. the famine and all years yeah. ago. Do you know what I mean? So they built up an Irish community and they're involved in the club. So it's a it's a staple to that society there. Makes sense. That's what, it, a club is different. But That's why there was more that when that Super League thing came in because mm. it's taken that out what built up the foundations of a yeah. club. So I don't follow Shelbourne. Who follows Shelbourne? Like? <laughs> Where even is Shelbourne? <laughs> yeah, good shout. You Where, what country is that? <laughs> what country is it in? The, sorry, sorry about him. <laughs> right, <laughs> sorry, it's okay. Yeah. But listen, um, a lot of people, Irish people, it's like, oh, God, don't support England or something like that. It's patriotic reasons, yeah. like, to do with stuff from years ago. Yeah. But that's bloody years ago. Like, move past it. You watch all these English, English fans shows. are annoying. Yeah, but that's what it, and it's the media as well. Like, if they win yeah. the Euro, yeah, but all never football the fans are irritated. They're still all talking about irritated. 66. Yeah, but. The, Have you ever met anyone more immature than grown men when their team loses? When well, my father is a huge Irish. Irish sports fan like um, Hurling and Gaelic and whatever right and any time his favourite like team would lose we were better off not even been in the place for two days he's depressed yeah I didn't mm. like that as well oh it's ridiculous yeah. please yeah I don't know. I just think I was in. Yeah, invest. Sorry, Calvin. Yeah, invest so much time in the support yeah. these teams. Yeah, but I'm like that. And then, I, like, you're waiting. So we're waiting all summer, right? So right. Like, the Euro was on this year, right? But last year, you're waiting all summer when the season ends and the new season starts. You're at the making a few signings. You're buzzing. We're gonna win it this year and just go out and get beaten train till the first day of the season. But if Look, I if I devil. love um I, if I say for example if I love watching reality shows and then say Love Violence on and I want somebody to win, they don't win. Yeah, I'm like, oh shit, I wish that person won, but it's well, not like that. I'm only investing 12 weeks, 16 weeks it's into that person. That. It's, it's your life for being a kid. A for being a kid. A yeah, club is different than like a reality show. You know I'm mean? trying to relate. I know you're at, but you're not doing a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to relate. But we were in Benidorm in 2018 at the last World Cup, and it was just full of English, and the carry on to them. You're like, Jesus Christ. In 2018, that yeah. time. Yeah, and it was. I, I lived in England that time, and all constantly in the pub so trying to. Yeah, so that's why around. people don't want them to win because they're carrying on like that and then you have the media constantly my friend you know I mean? my ex is like my boyfriend at the time his best friend start crying when England lost didn't they lose like in near the, the end yeah. yes yeah. we watched it all outside big huge screen it was like on a football yeah, ground so they put all like um, yeah. Yeah. to put all benches and all around she actually started crying and then yeah. the next day she said I was because she was drunk yeah. and then she felt embarrassed or something yeah. Yeah. but like it's ridiculous what's your take on it I, you didn't actually yeah I personally don't see the issue with it. If you want to support them, support them. I know there's people We all like have family. family yeah. There are neighbours. There are neighbours. There are family in England and they do support Ireland, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't see the, the issue in it now, you know what I mean? I don't see the I issue in it, but I'd rather the Italians win it. Yeah, I, I want to see Italy win it. What about your favourite club teams in England? Does any of the English guys play for any of those teams? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's on the English team then. So would you not support them then for that reason? Yeah, I'd yeah, be happy when they play Like Wayne Rooney or whatever yeah. it is. I wouldn't mind them winning oh. it. I just don't like the media coverage with them and the fans. Yeah. That's all. Like, that's right, just right. so annoying. Like he said, they won the World Cup in 1966. And they're still going on about it. Yeah. What about when Dublin wins the matches in Ireland? Uh, in no, Ireland, what happens no, as well? Yeah. We, actually, we actually had a bit of slaughter. They're going nuts on the Mike papers man. and all as well. Yeah, I couldn't give a bollocks. It's funny because the culties take it more serious mm. than we do. And like Dublin steamroll through it every year. Yeah. So like, yeah. My granddad and all like on my mum's side. So there's like that son-in-law thing with my dad. They all love the Dublin team. My dad can't stand how much to celebrate when they yeah. win. <laughs> he hates it. That's he what hates it, it. It's just a, it's a bit of crack, isn't it? A bit of yeah. Yeah. That's where it is. That's that's that one done. Um, McGregor and Party Eye the weekend. Calvin. Yeah, I'm shitting. Do you watch? No, but we have to support Conor McGregor. Yes, you. Yes, you. And but... although, although I don't know, obviously I've never met him in person, but like yeah. the media portrayal of his personality is so irritating yeah. how he is. Yeah. I think half of it is his show, so it's like a performance. Mm. But as an athlete, he's probably like the best we've ever probably had in Ireland in any sport. The most like he's famous incredible. Spoiled, that country, is top yeah. of the Forbes list. It's like he's incredible. It's like he's as f famous as fucking Beyonce is. Yeah, yeah. he's and our well, best sports person we've ever had. As well. He donated 25 grand to a GoFundMe for someone's cancer. But he does that to us for sure. It, no, because <laughs> he does that all the time. He does it all the time, Yui. He I mean, does. It, you can't say it's for sure. I mean, damage, did it, mate. a lot of damage control there with him and his career. Same yeah. with Tyson Fury and all of those people. I mean, listen, he still did it. He's going to save someone's yeah. fucking life. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't have yeah. to do it. So, I think it's incredible. I, inside, is it the Octagon? Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. He's just amazing at what he's done. Yeah. He's the best mm. in the world. He's top of the Forbes list. The fellas, mm. he grew up 
up in Dublin and he's top of the Forbes. From Crumlin. It's madness. Is it John Heard off? The Forbes. So is he having a fight soon, Dan? He's having a fight Saturday Saturday. night. So who's he fighting on Saturday night? Just Just Bury, yeah. Yeah. Is that bad? I don't know. Does. Not really. No, no, no. Fella beat him on, in January. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen that everywhere. Where is he yeah. from, the fella? The fella is from Louisiana, I think. Oh, he's American. So do you think he's going to win? Do you think he's going to win on the weekend? I hope he does. I don't know. I hope so. Oh, he'd back him, yeah. Oh, Everyone Vegas. goes crazy with him as well as fans. Remember all the fellas got the top knots and the beards yeah, yeah. in like 2015? Yeah. So like, it's the same thing. Everyone just jumps onto certain stuff yeah. and the media it. does that. Lads, if the world was open, there'd be no podcast this week because I'd be in Vegas right now. Would you really? Would you actually love to go yeah, over and watch that? I was saying in 2018 for wow. the Khabib fight and I'm still not over. But you know the thing is, I'm not a football fan, but I swear, do you know what them atmosphere is even like at the football shows like the World Cup? Oh, it's tangible. Like even yeah, with yeah, England, if England was honestly. doing so, so well and like I'd, I went with like my English friends or something it'd be amazing yeah, the buzz because of how real. everybody is yeah, yeah. the last football match we were at like I was hung, hugging random people and all you know what I mean jumping around you know it won't 4-0 some fella had me in the headlock with a hugging oh, each Jesus other. Christ. just a random <laughs> <thing. laughs> you know I mean? right. it was nuts bro. yeah, yeah. But, hopefully uh, he wins hopefully, hopefully he wins it's hopefully our McGregor Dublin gets it on the weekend yeah. anyways right quick one if you could get this one for Calvin yeah oh you can jump in if you want you if you could get any celebrity in the world except for McGregor <sighs> On the podcast, Stop. how would it be and why? Oh, God, that's that's hard because what's a celebrity? It could be infamous person as well. Anyone, it, it could be a bleeding uncle. Anyone in the world. Uh, the fuck celebrity podcast. That you'd like to ask questions you, 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 to. Give us your own one there because I'm stuck. I'd go stuck. Tyson Fury or David Goggins. Either of them two. Fuck. Struggling there, eh? Yeah, bro, you can't be on the There's too many people in the world, yeah, bro. Yeah, but look, just anywhere. Dead or alive, then? Oh, no. Oh. I know. It has to be alive. If, if you want to pick. And you can ask any question, there'd never be a ban on <sighs> questions, then. The I'd want to ask. Tell it, it's just yeah, around the mill, isn't it? You love it. This, That'd be good. Any question, now, you did do it and they'll answer, honestly. You could ask anyone in the world. I'm, I'm stuck, boys. And do you know what? I'm going to end up saying someone show you and. Everyone's going to be able to Do you know what always happens? I always say something, right? And then as soon as the podcast ends, I mean, the second we wrap it up, I go, bollocks! I'm not forgetting yeah. to say this. Yeah, but you could pick, like, a really famous, like, murderer and you'd ask him any question you wanted. How are you? Did you do it? No, but if you're a murderer, we already know, but I want to know why. What possessed you to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Questions just like that. It's people, isn't it, you? Do you know what I mean? Um... Calvin, you're going to have to hear this rest. Right, moving on, right? I know. I don't know what celebrity. We, we, we'll come back to you. If you could pick, if you had a podcast and you could pick anyone in the world, who would you pick? Um, He's in there. I'd want to pick somebody really famous. Anyone in the world? Because I'd make it like everyone will want to watch it then. I'm, just, I'm trying to be clever. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kim Kardashian, maybe? If I could ask her anything. Fuck it. I'll go with Kanye then. Okay, Kanye. Kanye oh, with Kanye, he'd bleed and talk. Yeah. He never shuts crack, up. Be, be very crack, that, would, yeah. that would be interesting. Uh, we'll go with the Kanye. Family. What about someone like a royal? What about like Prince Harry? Fuck him. And, uh, and if, you, if you'd answer any question, did Which your, na did your nanny kill one? your mother? Yeah. Ask him that. Look, there you go. Did she? Jeez. That's what I want to know. Come here. Which the one Queen of England, did you kill <laughs> Diana? Which one's Harry? The old one. No, Harry's the ginger one. Yeah, the he's one the one that fucked up. Megan, yeah, that yeah. one. And yeah. what's the other one's name? Uh, William, William, William yeah. Kurt. I love Harry and Megan. What's the story with his hairline? You know what I mean? Yeah, what's the story with my hairline? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a hair transplant soon. I get it next month. I get a hair transplant next month. Send Harry over, will you? Oh, he doesn't have bad hair. No, not me. I'm not Harry. <laughs> oh, <it's> a... <laughs> <laughs> when you nodded your head, I wasn't listening. Sorry. Do you know what his name is? <laughs> yes, it's Terence. Yes, that's You nodded great. your head, uh, Calvin. Oh, that's all right. Beautiful. That's your name. When you nodded your head, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. When you went like that. No, you he doesn't need a hair transplant. You've already no, got to take it. He's never going to William needs that yeah. done big time. Yeah, mm. yeah I'm getting mine done next month. Well, hopefully, if, co don't look too bad, if COVID it. police doesn't yeah. start bleeding, trying to arrest me or something. Yeah, rocking it now, in fairness. It's yeah. not too bad. I shaved. I used to have really long hair now, but you know what? It sounds so dramatic, but it's quite liberating that I actually just shaved it. I'm not Sorry, always Britney Spears trying to fix it off. I feel empowered yeah. now. I feel empowered. I'm in control of my body. He's a legend, this. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, another suggestion was they just wrote your accent, Tardens. Yeah. I so love it. I keep getting roasted here. We <laughs> have a little TikTok account, right? And they just slap the odd video up here and a little funny video or whatever, yeah? And I keep getting cunts going on to it and commenting saying, look at this age of trying to sound walking class. 
And I just don't get it. And my head's wrecked over so I mean, you don't, you give me something. sound more common in it's Dublin if you tried. Yeah. Like, You're more Dublin. Like the stereotype of a Dublin accent and he is. I just don't get it. My head is wrecked over it. And then someone put it in the suggestions for this week and I'm like, fuck off. I'm fucking sick of a place, yeah? No, I think you sound like very Dublin. But I just think it, it's people trolling online. Mm. You know what I mean? They just pick us up and just to have it. just to have something to yeah, say. Yeah, maybe someone may may have said it, and then another person went on and seen that comment. I'm like, oh yeah, let's say that again. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know quite well, Terence, you, what you sound like. Wankers in any way. Yeah, that's... but even like you swear and like your words that you use. If you're trying to sound posh, you wouldn't be bloody doing that, would you? No. Like like your slang words. Every well, people are saying he's trying to sound common. Mm. Yeah, people are trying to say, oh, oh he's from Fox Rock. He's trying to sound walking class. I'm like, mate, will you fuck off? Like, oh, I thought you said people said you're trying to sound posh. No. no. The other no, no, way you already just sound really Dublin to me. Yeah, 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 that's what. But people said you're putting this on, yeah, right? I've got yeah, sorry, it's all, it's all an act fine. like the sound will. No, well, you, well, I can confirm you sounded like this before we sat at the table. Sure, it's Gilbert, I'll take yeah. that. <laughs> you sounded like that earlier on, so <laughs> there you go. Melvin on, this is a more serious one. The power that that mad bang guy, I'm just going to read it out word by word. The power that mad, mad bang guy that had in town last week, taking the youngest phones off them and See arresting that? them. The video. What happened? Explain to me. Did you see the video? The I, I was on South William Street. I was. And uh, something happened with the guy. That, I think so. Was, I she think was just going so. around taking people's phones who were recording. I she think was snatching so. phones with like the boys so. in Bladen Talbot Street in 2012. Give me that phone gun. Right. That's what she was yeah. like. She was snatching phones. What were they filming? They were recording whole. She was. There was an altercation. Uh, I think people. I don't know what they what what they done, but. She was giving out to someone, and obviously one fellow was recording her, and she just yeah. But you have to because God knows because of what happens in the world and the corruption. This is why everybody exactly. films exactly. everything. So exactly, it went viral anyway. As it went around, it made the rounds. Uh, we've been very vocal about police brutality, yeah. mm. incompetence on this podcast, yeah. honestly. And uh, we are we're, we're, we're screaming out on this for fucking for months for. They need a revamp of the police system in this country yeah. for training. They don't know how to deal with people. They just can't deal with altercations. They don't know what to do. If somebody is filming, filming her though, and she's not doing anything wrong... What's you worried about? Yeah, that's the whole point. It's like, yeah. I'd, I'd actually, as a police person, for my own protection, so I couldn't be lied exactly. about. Because there's also stereotyped the other way around. It's yeah. not every police person's fault. Exactly. I'd want to be filmed. Yeah. yeah. Like, do they not have body cams on that's all the time? No, they don't. No, they actually yes, voted against body cams. Yeah. Why? Exactly. Because they're obviously well, stepping outside the mark of what and they're covering they up. should be doing. They're covering yeah. their own backs. But the thing about it was, what really caught my eye in the video, right? So... She's telling some fella she's going to arrest him. She's knocking points out of another fella's hand and she's snatching phones, right? And she thinks she's handled it perfect. Then the fella who's actually recording the video, she turns around, notices him recording and comes over to him and says, you have to leave the area under the Section 8 of the Public Order Act, right? And the fella takes a step back, doesn't leave. But there's a sergeant there and he comes over to the same fella, right? And says, do you mind stepping back? You're not making this situation any easier. Yeah. So how can... A sergeant who's higher rank not followed the same protocol as she did. She was just threatening people with, oh, Section 8, you have Using to Using her badge as a weapon. Yeah, oh, you I'm have a to police leave person, yeah. you'll have to listen to me. Yeah, you know, that's something that they try. Well, you want to see the carry oh, on about it. Like, oh, my. Trip. It's an I, need to, trip. I need to watch it, but that's what it is. It's, it's like, I'm trip. above you, so I can't. She's yeah. going out snatching phones off people. Yeah, like, I imagine stuff like just because she's in a uniform doesn't make her all right to wouldn't take someone's phone, you know? Yeah, but that's the only protection you have in these kind of situations. If a guy is getting out of hand, you have to record them. Look at the George Floyd thing. Exactly. If there hadn't been no cameras there. And imagine how many times it's happened over the last couple of late hundred years or however oh, long do you know time, what I mean how many times has that happened that yeah, it hasn't been recorded to everyone in power in the world is just corruption or in every industry when mm. somebody has power mm. it's as simple as that so that's why it's important if somebody can film a situation like that in my opinion someone had a, an amp you know like a speaker and he said that the police came over to them and the first thing the police said was, knock that off or I'm going to break it. Yeah. Like, what sort of way is that You have no way to, to break anyone's property. Yeah. And you're ruining it for other police people. It's actually probably yeah. really nice. Well, that's, that's what we try and say every fucking week. How many week? couples have we met since we started this podcast? Yeah. And it's, it's changed my perception of the police because... You're meeting people on a one-to-one -one basis. But they're apologising yeah. for, for the people they're working with. They come mm. up and that's one of the first things they say. Listen, I'm not one of them, but I know what you're talking about. So, so they know there's a problem in the system and it's, it's what do they call it? Like a, a systemic yeah. problem. It's bred into them. But oh yeah, it's conditioned. Yeah, yeah how you yeah, are. Yeah. But the thing about it is it's changed my perception because 
I'm talking to these people and then you don't even realise that guy that it's not yeah. people yeah, and yeah. Like, like you look like you, you enjoy a few drinks on the weekend yeah exactly you know yeah. I mean? just Whereas, some please as well I feel sorry for them as well because it's like if, if you were to put that uniform on you when there's say something huge happened imagine you're in America for example and you're a policeman walking through New York after like that George Floyd thing happened yeah. like a lot of the time they must be scared as well at the same time because they are there for people's protection yeah. it's not every person's fault that those things happen but unfortunately there's so many people in positions of power in the world that completely abuse yeah. so that so now they yeah, exactly. are carrying the pressure yes mm. an extra added pressure mm. but exactly. I get it like I just think they need to how they handle situations with people. Just deal with someone on a one-to-one yeah, basis. See, the problem as well is the people. Like, cause if we say, oh, that band guard is a cunt for doing that, or whatever and whatever, you always have these cunts that come in and they go, oh, but they're not all that bad. Oh, but look at the good that they've done here. And mm. it's like, that doesn't take away from what no, they're doing yeah, wrong no. here. And the that's good, what the problem the is. The good one cop at those doesn't outweigh the bad. No, never. Exactly. And no, that's, the that's the bad is totally human Especially in that position. If you're a copper. You're getting paid from taxpayer money to serve the public. Yeah, you you have a different role in society than everybody else. There shouldn't be any grounds for you to make a mistake. Mm. Or if there is, make a mistake, yeah. you should be dealt with consequently properly. Yeah. Right, Gilbert, straight into you. <laughs> straight in? <laughs> Fill us in. love got straight into me. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to us about life growing up. So what's right name? Back. Where'd it come from? <laughs> from the start. Like, still so, a black blind date, I am Huey from yeah. Ballymore. <laughs> no, I grew up in um, I grew up in Ballymore. My family. Oh, sorry to hear. <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> go from the inner city. Oh. We should understand stereotypes of where we come from more than anyone. I do. There we go. I'd still rather be stereotypical in a city. I know. I know. No offense. Bless me. Ballymore, gay town. traveler. Ballymore. You should have been ginger. Yes. Yeah. Hey. If I'd been ginger as well, I would have just had everything <laughs> that could have been slagged off with at the at the bloody playground. Everything. Ballymore. Every type of stereotype is on me. So no, okay. You're from Ballymore. Yeah. yeah, so I moved there when I was, I think I was like three years old. My mum grew up there, so that's how my mum and dad kind of moved there. Um, Mill from where? Uh, Tala. I used to live there till I was every... <laughs> Doesn't get much worse than well, that. Sheriff Street <laughs> before that. That would have thrown him into I was fire. born in uh, Drada. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> I was. Oh, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, up boys. Right, so my parents basically went to every bloody place in Dublin that's derelict. Just go to Ballymun, go around. <laughs> and then I went to school there all my life. Um, done my leave and start whatever Ballymun. I was actually the first traveller person to do my leave and start in the secondary school that I went to. Class. Actually, yeah. yeah. That's actually Weirdly enough, leave. the travellers have been there for like 40 years before that. Mad. And I was, And they told me um, just before my graduation, they told me that. And they have it in the skill now, in the comp from Ballymun. No way. Actually, yeah, I promise. How weird late. is that? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's so I was the first ever traveller in my skill to ever do my leaving, sir. That's class. And that's where I grew yeah. up. And come here, have you got any brothers and sisters? So I've got an older sister who's like 11 months older. And yeah. then I've got a younger sister. What age is she? She's 20, nearly 21. So she's like six and a half years yeah. or something younger. And what was it like growing up in Ballymun? So I grew up like on a halting site, like a traveller's yeah. halting site. Mm. So the, that's when my parents moved from Tallaght to Ballymun. They moved over because that new site had like opened up. So that's why we moved over to Ballymun. And then obviously like my grandparents lived around the corner. Mm. Um, it was just like a normal life, I suppose. It was normal as anything that I ever knew. Yeah. Um, but like growing up like as a traveller... Um, I always found it hard to find anyone that I could ever relate to. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? Like, there's a lot of toxic masculinity. And, like, I grew up in times when things wasn't as maybe as evolved as it might be today. And also, I think because we have so much technology, like social media and reality TV and stuff... The world is smaller now. Yeah, but at the same time, you can access more people. Yeah, that's yeah. So, yeah. It's a smaller place now. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I only knew, obviously, the four walls around me, like mm. uh, like everyone back then, and that's for better or worse or whatever. But in this instance, that obviously made it worse because I looked around me and I never really had anyone that I felt like I was similar to. Like, I'd never seen, like, a gay couple, for example, or, like, a gay wedding or whatever else, even though there's all these, like, stereotypes of loads of traveller weddings. I've never, ever seen something like a same-sex like Honestly, relationship yeah. or anything like that ever in my whole life growing up so obviously that made life quite difficult because I always felt like really strange or like really weird what age are you talking here? 
oh God, as far back as I can remember, you know, my sister actually asked me this. I would say back as far as like four or five years old, I always felt really, really different about her kids, definitely. Mm. Because what you need to remember is like my father was always like a really man's man. Yeah. And that's probably like a lot of our dads, whatever, and there's yeah. no harm. I don't think that's just a travelling community. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's been most going people. On. And what you need to remember as well is, is that in Ireland, compared to especially since like I've lived in England, mm. um, Ireland's history, even in recent years, is so much more traditional than that of a place like Britain mm. has not evolved as much if that makes sense it's very multicultural now but even 20 25 years ago it was a different country to what it is now do you understand what I mean yeah, like I, like you grew up in it's different yeah the times yeah. I grew up in yeah. um, and especially the community that I grew up in like there was so much like toxic masculinity where like like even just my dad and his friends like you'd hear like certain comments or certain slurs whatever be said and I'd always kind of feel like how then can I ever talk about something when I get to a certain age yeah. when this is kind of the kind of feel general feel of things now like that doesn't mean it's like it affects me today because like, I've got a great relationship with my parents now yeah. but it really took until like so to speak it came to their doorstep for them to kind of Address it really, yeah, yeah, or be in any way understanding. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, cause like that was just the world that I grew up in, I suppose, mm. when I was a kid. And you used the box and all though. Like, you, you would yeah. have had a rel- relatively normal childhood. Yeah, of course, it was completely normal. Like, I never, ever, ever was like deprived of anything growing up. But one thing that I really did need, I needed um, a home that I grew up in that I felt like I could speak in, and I never had that. Yeah. Never ever had that, and that did definitely affect me when I got older. And like obviously, I still done sports and done all these normal things. Went through school. My parents are always so supportive. Mm. Yeah. When it comes to all that, my dad's a really ambitious person and all. Mm. But what I needed was somebody to be able to speak to, and maybe even just have uh, one of the reasons why I loved when I've done telly and the things I uh, reason why I talk about it is, like there could be another kid who comes from maybe like my background or another like maybe suppressed background or whatever, and then they've got somebody who they can watch or listen to that understands the experiences they're going through. Do you understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I never had that. So you're kind of like trailblazing, you're setting the path. Well, I'm not trying and... to do that, but I mean, if I have an opportunity to ever speak out publicly, I always will do under the right circumstances because yeah, yeah. I don't want to preach either, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think your point is lost when you're Drilling it down somewhere. Yeah, nobody wants to hear that. Exactly. So just speak about your own experiences and then somebody might be able to relate, you know what I mean? So going back to you were talking about you did sports and all that carry on. You did all the normal stuff. Yeah. Did you enjoy it or were you talked into doing it and you think oh, you're a young man that's what you're supposed to do that's or... a brilliant question I first of all think that every kid should always be taught self defence sports I think it should be part of school curriculum just, and like money management stuff like that we mm. should be getting taught in school that's just my opinion anyways so I'm really glad I done that but it definitely was like the norm I know there's that stereotype of travellers with boxing but that's what I was going to say it's like a traditional thing it was definitely that, the norm yeah, yeah. but well that's how we actually I know we're well, fucking Every bleeding week, and I don't know one's gonna snap, but that's how we got you on because yeah. your ergo friend Ryan yeah. used to box with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is how this is how, this how you found me. So yeah. like I done boxing um, for what age was that? Maybe like ten till I was like seventeen. So seven years. Yeah. I done boxing for, and I done it in like Dublin City. So I was in Corinthians. I was in Dublin Docklands, and then before that, for a few years, I was in one in um, Baldile, but it got closed down. Yeah. So like I had that grown up, and obviously that that was probably like the most normal thing for my dad to put his son into boxing because that it was, was kind of expected. Yeah, yeah. completely. Mm. And like, but I did enjoy it. Like. I I, I loved the sense of achievement. It always kept me fit. It kept me out of trouble and stuff like that. It kept you focused. Yeah, but the problem is that my dad's extremely militant. So I had no like teenage life whilst I was mm. doing that because he's an extremely focused person. Uh, but when I got to like 16 or 17, I realised like all of the hard work I put in because I'm one of them people like I always try my best. Yeah. I'm doing it for what? It's not my dream or something anyway. So that's why I stopped doing it. But definitely like, that was a brilliant question because growing up it would have just been seen as normal and if I did didn't want to do it like that would have been considered strange and I would have probably got a lot of questions then, yeah, yeah, if I'm honest yeah. because it was like oh you're a boy you want to do boxing boys like to do boxing yeah. that was the sort of mentality of the people that I grew up around but that's changed in recent years with like my background and stuff yeah, yeah. definitely and when we asked you uh, about life growing up you said like oh, I was just the norm for you so you knew nothing but the four walls that's just yeah. your life growing up but what was it actually like because we wouldn't know what your life was like growing so up like, so like for me I always find it very hard to find a place to put my 
myself into. Yeah. So I was a traveller to non-travellers. And yeah. then within travellers, I was never like your, the regular boy. I never... Like I could, and then the background I grew up in at that time with the people that I grew up with, I'm not speaking for everyone, it was weird for boys and girls to be friends. So if I related to a girl, even if she was like my cousin or something like that, it was weird if we were like friends as kids, like in adult size and stuff. Yeah. But I never could relate to like other little boys and stuff. So I never knew where to fit myself. And you know what? That became like a recurring theme throughout my life. And I really genuinely believe the stuff that happens in your childhood really shapes your life. Not that you can't change that. You definitely Well, can. studies prove nowadays but that that is the case like childhood trauma but not yeah. it doesn't have to be trauma but your childhood it's will all shape trauma it. it's all trauma yeah. but and it doesn't have to shape all your life but it definitely definitely has a huge impact on 100%. you and you only come to that realization later on and that's when you like try to change it people can go down the path of like drugs or self-harming or whatever that can end up being a reflection of those bad things yeah. and then you come to realize and then change it obviously because you can't let those things affect all your life yeah but for me like the pattern that I seen throughout my life was constantly putting myself down, constantly never feeling good enough, never feeling like, like just constantly sort. Do you know, like in a situation, it'd be just I would just be like, I put myself down so nothing was expected of me. So then, if I got something, then it'd be like, oh, like you done really well done, good, yeah. Yeah. like that. Even though I done sports and stuff, I'm talking about more when I came an adult. When I got to maybe like. 2021 20, it was like that's when it sort of started happening with me a lot do you know what i mean yeah and it was only really i'd say like in the last year i really addressed all those things and really put right back to when i was younger because like when i lived in england i used to work with kids in care and it was like therapeutic care and it'd always be therapists and stuff and i'd always hear them like chatting with the kids and i'd um, have conversations with them sometimes and it was true some of those conversations because i don't have for like three years that i kind of learned how to, you can kind of follow something back to somewhere it kind of came from you even pinpoint the kind of thing even if it's like a phobia or whatever it is yeah. it always comes from somewhere we're not born with any of these yeah, things yeah. racism or yeah. whatever it is it comes from somewhere your life growing up what you've listened to so if you're constantly all the time questioned and judged because like as a kid I'd have like a lot of homophobic stuff because I was always a bit like stereotypically more like feminine than I was yeah. Boyish, if you know what I mean wasn't really into football and sports or whatever so I grew up obviously with kids always pointing those things out with me especially like where I grew up and I'd even have adults saying it to me where I grew up and that's so bad to say and I never taught my parents until I got older some of like the people I grew up around like from the travelling community were horrible to me horrible like people would stop me from playing with their kids and stuff yeah, and I remember I, that again um like, I don't, I know you're saying the travelling community, because that's where you grew up, but yeah. I don't think that's just a travelling no, community God, no. thing. I think I'm a traveller and I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I, what I was going to say is, so, you summed it up perfect when you're like, from to non-travellers, you're a traveller, and then in the travellers, you're the gay one. So where did I fit, w yeah. where was my person? But do you feel like, so, to the rest, do you know, growing up, did you feel there was a stigma towards you because you were a traveller? Oh, completely, completely. Yeah. Like people, a lot of people think you're victimizing yourself when you talk about that. Mm. The, I actually think that um, prejudice towards travelers is the most susceptible prejudice there is in the entire world. Like you listen to slur words. I'd agree, I'd agree. Yeah. You listen to slur words when, that like, gets used. I think when, sorry for interrupting you, but I seen a video a while ago and it was a traveling, traveler family and they were complaining because this restaurant now this obviously before COVID yeah. but like they were like you just toned us down because we're travellers and like it was brushed across there was like the comments it, no, it no one gave a bollocks an uproar. There, no, we, there's no allies no one gave a bollocks and no it, 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 it's only when you click you're like like that family didn't actually do anything other than the fact that you were travelling yes. that's travellers show it, that's it, madness like, that. when can, you think about the it the stories madness. I can tell like, you it's something perfect it's the most acceptable ridiculous. acceptable uh, prejudice, prejudice in the world yeah it is yeah. like people use slur words all the time that people know the geography origin of those words is words against travellers if you were to take the word like that's against black people or gay people or whatever, give it even another meaning or use it in, without thinking about that and you're just saying it in a different context, you'd never, it'd never be acceptable. No. Never ever in society would that ever be acceptable. Yeah. Like if somebody was saying slur words to me in the street because I was a traveller, people might stop and think, oh, stop doing that to another person, but it'd only be seen like in a bullying way. Yeah. But if I was black and somebody was saying racist words towards me on the street because I was black, it'd be seen as a racist attack. Yeah. Wouldn't be just bullying somebody or yeah. picking on somebody. Do you know what I mean? But isn't uh, so? And 
travel is actually an ethnic race in Ireland. Now. Yeah, it's considered that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were, if someone was to use slurs towards you, it can be seen as a form of racism now. Yeah, of course. And like, it's treated like uh, in the eyes of the system, it's yeah. treated the same. Before it was an ethnic minority, it still would have been part of the Discrimination Act, anyways. Mm. So it's just an ethnic minority now. I think people who are really um, passionate about it. For example, if they're doing paperwork and stuff, there's always like those boxes you can tick what's your racial background. Yeah. Some people are actually really, like my dad and stuff, is very passionate to be able to have those options that you can put down like on a profile almost who you are, where you're from. Yeah. Right? Well, that's and, like, and that's another stereotypical thing about travellers. They're yeah. so, so proud. Yeah, a lot of people They're a proud like, race of people. But I'm 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 also like an Irish person, a, a blue eyes, like I'm all these different things. It doesn't matter like where I come from, it doesn't define me at no, all. No, but I mean exactly. in terms of if the box was there, they fucking Oh of course they, they I would. Of course yeah. I would. You know, I would. That's what it they wasn't do. something that so. I stood up for. Like I went on to declare um Burnshaw, they asked me to go on and talk about this. It was in 2017 that came in. Um, so that's like very, very recently to talk about it. And she asked me, what does it mean to you? And I was very honest. And I was like, do you know what? It doesn't mean anything to me exactly like as in I needed this to be made an ethnic minority by law because I already know where I'm from. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I already know who I am. I don't need anybody else to yeah. tell me that or what the law says. No piece of paper is going right? to change it. But people that live a very traditional travelling lifestyle... <laughs> The reason why it's important for that to come into law is so that they're protected and their culture is yeah. protected. So that the council and the government and people, when they're funding stuff or whatever they're doing, it's funded to protect people's cultures also. So like halting sites, for example, that they can be kept around and not just knocked down yeah. and put people into houses. And even today, I actually see in Lynn Rowan here. Saying that. Yeah, so today in the in the Senate, or the Senate, sorry, um, it was the first time it was... Uh, Discussion was chaired by a, tra- a member of the travelling community. Oh, that wow. was today. Yeah. yeah, that was only wow. today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then today. even last week, there was a discussion in the doll for the travelling uh, education and, uh, sorry, travelling history to be taught in the educational I, system. I definitely agree with that, though, also. 100%. But you know, one thing as well that I, I, I really kind of, I always try to say to people is there's so much stereotyping already when it comes to travellers. Everybody always thinks that everybody lives a certain way of life because they're travellers. That's not true at all. I completely live my own life that on paper, if I left out the fact that I'm a traveller, you'd probably never no, guess I was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You'd never guess that I was. Mm. And that, I'm not one in a million. Like, that's just so much diversity in the travelling community, but it never gets talked about in the media everybody always talks about racism towards travellers but what also needs to be talked about I think what will actually make a huge difference in society is um, the internal stigma in the travelling community the diversity in the travelling community if you're actually talking about and showing all of these different people from this background you're proving that point to society and what's really important as well as like for the mental health problems and all this within the travelling community is to talk about how young boys and girls are very pressured sometimes by older people in that community or that background or in their family to kind of fit a certain box like Ireland 20, 30 years ago yeah. um, and how that affects people's mental health because it's seven to eight times higher to die of suicide in the travelling community yeah, than I any other background that. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. and already yeah. listen to this statistic like it's so shocking already um, suicide is the biggest killer of men under 40 in Ireland and in Britain and um, more than like cancer one in three people say gets cancer suicide is even worse than that right to be a traveller, it's seven to eight times more likely you will die of suicide and have mental health problems than that one. That statistic is already so shocking. Do you know what and I mean? And you put that down to I the old traditional values that are being in an older today. generation. Doesn't, yeah, yeah. It doesn't match today. Now, if you want to do that personally, that's absolutely fine. Mm. But don't sit on camera and tell the whole world we but all do it. That kind of comes back to the thing you're saying. If you preach it to someone, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. Kind of force it down someone's throat. Yeah. yeah. So I, d- uh, that's what I always think. Like, if I go by my experiences, what I found very hard growing up was to kind of being forced into a box. That's what affected my life really bad. Of course, people judging me in school and saying stuff because I was a traveller mm. was disgusting. It makes you feel embarrassed and whatever else. But for me, it was 10 times worse that 
you you felt like maybe you couldn't go home and talk about certain things or whatever else. Do you, do you understand what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that affected me worse. So it's that, that's the topics that doesn't really get talked about is how within the traveling community, like many religious backgrounds or whatever, um, women get slut shamed so much more. Um, there's like, there's more homophobia, there's more toxic masculinity. Men don't speak about their mental health even more than in, regular society when that's already a problem yeah do you know what i mean yeah. so just, it's just it's like the same issues as in regular society but then they're just a bit stronger yeah. again and then there's, there's a lot of travelers that don't have education to even know how to even go about changing this whereas i did thankfully i had education i went to school with different boys and girls went to boxing different boys and girls from completely different backgrounds mm. i always integrated so i knew there was a full world out there to kind of go and visit and see and thankfully that's a way that a lot of young travelers are going so that now more people know their options doesn't mean you're not remembering where you're from i completely support like my parents and grandparents their culture should be protected by law travelers halting sites should be built it shouldn't be like because now they don't build halting sites anymore the council doesn't like they actually don't build them anymore and that's become an issue and it's something that's been talked about a lot and um, it's how they don't do that they're wanting to kind of integrate people into different communities and whatever but i think people's culture should should be protected you should be able to live by that what's well, going on for hundreds of years how you've always been yeah. raised but for me it's important for the new generation to also know there's a full world out there and go and find out who you are as a person and it's not just you being a traveler it's who you are as an individual yeah and i think you're like literally the spotlight for that thank you in the traveling community like so you talked about being a traveler to non-travelers what was it like growing up like you so you said you knew from a young age you were different yeah what was it like when you kind of realized right i'm I'm not the same. I, I'm as gay. Other, Yeah, yeah. So it's like, as a kid, I was always like quite aware of a lot around me, which was good and bad because like, I was smart and stuff in school, but then I was really aware if somebody was looking at me in a weird way or whatever else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, like, I remember that like so distinctly when I was a kid, when I think back on like my childhood. Um, I was always just... I always just felt really different and I didn't know exactly what it was and I just felt so different of like other kids or like conversations that hear me dad having with their friends if they were like having a joke about like a girl or a girl on TV or or like page tree you know something like yeah. that there yeah. I, I always it just made me feel strange and I didn't know why and I'm talking about like when I was five yeah. six years old like I was really young mm. Um. And it was then just as I kind of got older, you start to understand yourself a bit better. And one of the problems is, is like when you watch like mainstream television or even like Disney movies, it's always a prince and a princess. It's all, do you know what I mean? It's stuff like, it's, they're always white. It's these sorts of things that conditions yeah. us from being kids I to look at. I think that I'm wrong. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it makes kids think what's more superior and what's normal and what isn't. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? And like all that sounds dramatic and it sounds like people are sometimes kind of being oh, a bit over the top. Yeah. But genuinely, like it's little things like that that you just don't relate to when yeah, you're little, when you're feeling different. Yeah. 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 Like, like if you grew up and there was just always two guys kissing in cartoons yeah. and stuff, you probably, you would feel strange. Yeah. You would feel like... Oh, well, that's normal. Why? Well, what am I? Yeah. And then when you hear like disgusting, vile language said about gay people and like I grew up kind of around a lot of really strong religion as well. So like that was really like that was a decision. It was really against what was normal, what mm. was God and all of this. Like I'd heard like I've heard 10 times worse than that, but I wouldn't repeat it. A lot of the things that I grew up around, like in my experience. So that kind of makes you constantly question like yourself, who you are and stuff. And it wasn't until I got to like 21 and by then it was like at a stage where it was like, I just have to live my life for myself. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I started telling like my friends and stuff, like non-travellers and travellers, they already, like they already knew. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, that's something fairly common. Like, they I, already knew. Yeah. That's something like, you know, when you hear like someone was uh, would come out as gay, but like, the, and... People say, how did your family take it? Like, the first thing that parents would say is, I know. I knew. Like, <laughs> we know, what's a big deal? Like, yeah. get over it kind of thing. And as my a joke. parents genuinely ended up taking that so... Like, I genuinely thought, like, I wouldn't have been speaking to my what dad ever What age did you actually again. sit down and have the conversation with Never, them? ever, ever have to this day. Never to this day. What happened was, is that... Kind of told a few people from, like, late teens, like, early adulthood, like, 19 or whatever... Yeah. 
I do got trust like people like my age close like friends, friends yeah, yeah. yeah. Or my, my cousins and stuff like that like my age group in my family um, and I kind of spilled I wondered like if he was drunk or whatever else and then I was like 21 and I remember it was like five years ago I was like going into 2016 or whatever it was and I told my cousin one night and then I told my sister and then she told her friend and, and it was all on the same night. It was all really, really drunk, right? I was going to share, there's obviously a field I was in, um, I'll tell you actually where I was. I was in Ballyferma and I was in that pub, the county bar in Ballyferma. So if anyone's from Ballyferma listening, that's where I came out. <laughs> and um, then kind of, one part, it was sort of kind of said then with my parents, true kind of like passing comments, like indirectly it was spoken about. And then we kind of just left it there. And then I went into Big Brother and then got with Vine television. Yeah. So like there was no going back then. It was just, but do you think there was like, it's just, there was that barrier there because maybe you and your parents were kind of in the denial about it. Like it was a conversation you just weren't no, it was prepared just to have. No, because of what I grew up around it was a conversation I never would have the confidence to, to that's talk what about. I mean even so now I'd find that we're talking yeah. about certain subjects if like my dad was just sat there because it's just so conditioned in my brain because of the stuff I grew up listening to yeah not just from him I mean everyone just the environment I grew up in and like my dad wouldn't know how to speak about his emotions he wasn't raised like that he grew up in a very traditional times for travellers and stuff so it's just sort of a conversation we've never needed to have and we yeah. don't and we just don't have it it just is what it is it is what thing. it is and like we've got a great relationship he was so supportive like throughout my whole time in Big Brother he was like my biggest fan mm-hmm. um, and he always has been ever since and did that I, shock you that yeah yeah it did because like before that we had a quite a tumultuous relationship it was yeah. quite a broken relationship in a way it's kind of sad that you didn't get to sit down and yeah. have that conversation but it's good now to look back and say that you have a great relationship yeah. with well if it wasn't needed there's not really a need to highlight it and be like oh, look. I know no, what you mean it's nice to have that moment yeah. with great parents that I support you I love yeah. you yeah, yeah, because yeah, for yeah. someone I know who has came out like that they've got that back in and they can remember and they can pinpoint the moment and it's like, yeah, I remember when I went into the kitchen and we sat down and we said this. And yeah, I've never that. had that. And if you look back, that's kind of sad. Yeah, it'd be nice good, to have that. It would be, but it's, it's great now that you can look back because from the outside looking in, if someone was to say like, oh, he's a gay traveller, everyone would say like, oh, what they're, was so, like set they in their, they're yeah. so set in their ways. There's no way. And you said there's so much toxic masculinity that you grew up in. The fact that you can look back now and say that you and your dad have a great relationship is brilliant. It made us have a good relationship, but I sort of had that support moment. Like, when I come off in Big Brother, the first thing he done was just, like, hugged me, and it was the first person who did. And that was sort of like him saying that to me, like, I'm okay with whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's how he said it, because he would not know how to speak about his emotions. But he he still expressed it in a way that you know. That's what he done, yeah. So and that, I think that's what helps. You, isn't it? you have that yeah. peace of mind that. I, and you know what? Have this, like. When I got to go on Big Brother, that completely, like, that was like a lifesaver because it kind of allowed me to go away from home, still be able to be watched by my family and, express and just be yeah. me and be around like like-minded people. It was a bit like when I was in school with people from all different backgrounds and stuff. And it was fantastic because I'm such a people's person, but it was great that my family could watch it and see all the support I got, see how many people in the yeah. travelling community supported me, yeah. how many young people like have come out since then. Because that was such a huge part of my story in there was yeah. the fact that I was a gay traveller and stuff like that there. And the producers and stuff like, love that storyline because anything you see of travellers in the media it's always for good and bad it's always kind of a one kind of view yeah. like everyone has these traditions uh, the boys do box and there's big weddings and yeah. it looks like everybody has money Very and eccentric. everyone's yeah. really religious yeah. and it's a secret community it's a secret world when really that's just a really exaggerated idea of essentially people that are the same as anybody else there's all different people in the same families like every family that there is but it was great for people to see somebody like me who was so different to that stereotype and then for young boys and girls growing up to be able to kind of see like you can come from whatever background you come from but you can be still be your own individual Mm. like I love the fact that I'm Irish I love the fact that I'm a traveller but I'm just myself, like, yes, do you know what I mean? I'm, just, I'm Huey. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that's just for anyone. Everyone should be like that. Yeah. yeah. Can we get into the reality stuff, yeah. right? Because you're a hero for a bit of spotlight. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> you are. He loves Big it. brother. Dancing with the stars. Yeah. Four states. Yeah. Uh, eating with the enemy. Yeah. Is that what it's eating with the yeah. enemy, isn't it? Yeah. 
Talking bollocks podcast. <laughs> Just the two of us. D- keep going. Yeah. Not twice. I've done a different show. Done it twice? Yeah. I've done a different show not long ago. Stuff in the I'm walks. doing another one. I've already filmed another show Here not long ago. Sorry, and I'm doing another one really soon. Yeah. And what, what do you do for a living though? So I own my own business I've got a business with my Look brother-in-law There we go <laughs> And it's literally brand new Well it's not We started like a few months ago But because of Covid Trading was difficult yeah. and whatever Before that I used to um, Be a residential care worker For years on and off um, In Ireland and in England And then when I came home last year After my breakup um, My brother-in-law just asked me just said Would you like to just set something up together So we set up a supplier's business So like we do tool supplying and stuff like that The construction and builders and whatever So that's what we do And now I'm training and doing aesthetics So like lip fillers and stuff so that's, that's the next plan. What was the first reality TV show you went on? Um, so the first time I ever had social media, the first time I'd ever been on television, it all happened the exact same time. First time I ever had a relationship, all happened when I went on Big Brother. So that was like a really bizarre moment <laughs> in my life. And that was the first time I'd ever, ever been on telly. How would you go about getting on Big Brother? Right, so like normally when you go on like shows like Love Island and Big Brother and all, you just apply through like their websites and did, stuff like that. You used to watch it though, like obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it all my life and all I loved right. like the celebrity version and stuff. Um, but what I literally done was I sat down one day, literally not long after I came out of all my family and all, and I said, you know what, this year I'm going to try and do things that I would um, like love to do and have experiences in life. So not like they want to travel or whatever. And I just said I'd love to go on Big Brother. So I literally Googled, how do you go on Big Brother? I knew you can apply to the normal website, but I knew there'd be bloody thousands of people auditioning. I probably don't even look at all the applications. Mm. So I scoured the internet and I found a producer's email. I don't know how I'd done it, but I found it. It shouldn't have been there, <laughs> but I found it, right? And I emailed them. St- oh, God, you want to see the email? It was so shocking. Honestly, we're talking about talking bollocks. The fucking walk. <laughs> oh, my God, it was so shocking. But I knew what I was doing because I said, if I was a producer, what would I want to hear? So I just, like, just wrote Tell it. Jane, give us a and they must have thought he's, a, he's either a liar or he's a psychopath when yeah. I did her because of the stuff I put into that. Well, come here, you weren't lying. Mm, yeah, but I really, exa- I did, I did, exa- <laughs> I did exaggerate a lot, and then um, I basically got like a phone call not long after that, and then coincidentally they were coming to Dublin to meet like with a few people there, like potentially were going to cast, like who did met through like agencies and whatever, mm. and I'll never forget it was on the keys. You know where the jury's in hotel? You no, not yeah. jury's in is. On the keys, was there a Jory's in Hotel? There was, yeah. It's now a different yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. Went there, and when I was inside... Next door to the CHQ. Yeah. Everyone yeah. was like... It's like on the way up to the tree arena. Like yeah, down, down next door to the CHQ, yeah. When I was... Um, when I was inside, everyone was like in and out in like 10 minutes. And I was ended up, when I went in, I was in the last. I was in there for like about two hours. And we were just talking utter rubbish and we were doing like videos and we were chatting about like my background and like who I am, why I'd like to do the show, how long have I been a fan, my favourite like contestants has ever been. Because some of the producers have worked in the fan in the beginning and like I literally like loved it. But like if you met like your favourite football team or mm-hmm. something, you'd want to sit there and just talk all day. That's what I done. And then I suppose it just liked me and just kept calling me back for other auditions. I went to England to some of them and then I got on the show. And, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a crazy time. Oh. We watched your highlight reel on YouTube. Did you? Other. Did oh, you? Oh, I was, I was <laughs> not. The rants you were going on. Yeah. And I think everyone who knows, if you haven't, go on there. Just type in Yui Martin Big Brother. The one where you go into the room and you're like, oh, get me it. out of this house. She was horrible. But do you know what? It's like, she was a nasty cow, the woman I was in there with. But it's like, it's such an intense environment. It's like, you're in a situation. living on top of each other. Yeah, you're in a situation that you'd never be in. Like, you shouldn't even be in that. Do you know what I compare it to? If people say to me now, what's it like to be on shows like that? Where you're cut off from the world, you don't have a phone and stuff. The it's joke. so similar. Right, well, I've never been there before. <laughs> <laughs> right. But do you know what I think it's really like? It's like you're living in this alternate universe and everything that you're used to as an adult is taken away from you. You know, like a bit like when you went through lockdown mm. and you were just locked in the house and everything you were used to in your normal life was completely so gone. So you flourished through lockdown as well. But it was so similar. It was exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. And it's so bizarre as an adult asking, can you have another drink or can you this or can you that? It's so weird. But the only reason why... 
I would like want to stay in an environment like that is because I tried so hard to get in there and it was like my dream my whole life do you know like I was said I didn't really have anyone to relate to growing up and when I used to watch shows like that this is why I loved them is because I showed all these different people from different backgrounds and that's exactly why I loved the show growing mm, up mm. Um, but like if you didn't want to be in there Jesus Christ almighty you'd, you'd be nuts to stay in an environment like that because it's literally the hardest thing you've ever done but it was the most amazing hard, experience yeah yeah, but it's yeah. good crack. It's good. really I, I fun. Say, uh, it must be mad looking back on it now, isn't it? You watch it yeah, back? it's like it's weird when I think back now because like I didn't do because like, I've done other programs similar to that. Um, but like that'll always be my favorite thing I've ever done in my whole life. Yeah. Well, no matter what, what I do, set her off really. Yeah, but even without that, it was just I always loved it, and like no one from where I'm from ever done it. No one from fucking Ballymun or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> but like no one from like in my family had ever done anything like that. I was so outside the norm. Yeah. And like anyone that I always said I'd love to go on a TV show one day, I always thought it was crazy to even think like that. So I, I just see it as such a big fifty of them or something at this stage. Yeah, but I see it as a great achievement, and it was the best experience. Experience I've ever had, but hands down, the most difficult thing, one of the most difficult things I've ever done. It was yeah. so mentally draining. Yeah, but you come across very well on the telly. Like, yeah. On these shows. Especially because we actually, we were up in Moigaf the other day and we were looking at a few of your clips because we've never seen Big Brother or anything yeah. like that ever. So we were looking at a few of your clips and we were getting a good laugh and we were saying, this fella's a gas, come we'll have yeah. a bit of buzz room. But then we watched the four states one yeah now I actually it's a bit of a guilty pleasure I made me both watch four states and do you it's a bit <laughs> sad yeah it's a bit sad but you know what, <laughs> do you know what we love doing you be watching four states and then straight away going that, that's a no that's a yeah and right then, yeah and do you know what one's the best I part? love that at the end where you can tell like one of them is going to say yeah and they be like you go first and then they're like you go first that's and the person goes oh it? I'd love to meet you again but as friends and then like your mum be like Oh yeah, I was gonna say the same. No, you weren't. <laughs> you already, you were ready to get down on one name proposal. <laughs> there you go. Well, they're the best ones, but um, no, because we were talking about like how awkward it was. Yeah, man was a bit of a prick. Oh, it's horrible. And um, but you're so like right. I'll make the best of a bad situation. Then I'm like, a really positive person. Big well, brother you come was across like crazy. That but but what like I was that. saying as well is because Calvin's like your man was a wanker. He, he was, was a, a wanker. legend, whatever. But I think after your man actually wasn't too bad. Like it, oh, it was a prick. Yeah, remember was, at the end he goes to pay, but then you actually have a bit of buzz and all. And I'm Pro- like, I'm telling you now, I've never in my life. You think that was bad on TV? Can you imagine? Like sort of. T- table was about this length because of COVID whenever right and then we're sat next to each other at the end when we're doing the interview okay right yeah. but um <laughs> can you imagine that. being sat like that and it's like yeah. when they're filming you and it's all of that and in fairness it's clipped as well so it's two longer hours. yeah yeah Fuck so that. you're watching that through the telly and it's like oh it seems rude two hours I was trying to drag a conversation now bearing in mind he was far from anything I was attracted to but I was just trying to be nice I knew the second I seen him that it was never going to be anything. Yeah. Right. But and even just from how, just from the demeanour of him and stuff, it wasn't even just because of how he looked. Within five seconds, I just didn't like him at all. Yeah. Um. But I still sat there and was trying to be nice. And I'm also aware of the fact that they're filming a TV program. They're wanting people to sit there and chat and get to know one another. Like be respectful of of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Sorry, don't worry. Be about respectful you. of that fact during <laughs> fucking. <laughs> be respectful of that fact during COVID. Mm. Like that was like last October. Or the height of COVID that you could even go out of a bloody restaurant I was just like excited about that fact mm, no yeah. but that's what comes across because he's sitting there and he's like, he's looking away and you're like right I know you're not interested in me but should we not have a good time and have and a laugh nice. and joke? Yeah, man's like, like, there's no need oh, to be rude. and you're like what a wanker I hate rude people and do you know what I was do I was do, dying to just get up and scream the whole place out of it and literally call him every name underneath his son like what you did in Big Brother yeah <laughs> I was dying to do it but I didn't, and I said, you know what? I knew exactly how he was going to look on TV. Yeah. And I said, I'm just going to leave him, let him bury his own grave, and I'll sit there. That's why I was chatting to the waiter and the other people and all, is because I felt so awkward. awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. worse for me than an awkward silence. Jesus Christ, I know don't shut up. But I, oh, I hate <laughs> an awkward silence. It's so awkward. It must be a rare occasion. Yeah, but imagine how anxious you are. Imagine knowing you're being filmed in that yeah. moment. Do you still like, get, do you get nervous and all? Do you be rattling when the cameras are on No, you? no, no, not at all. It's not He's like, bleeding. Yeah, I wouldn't get um, nervous or something like that. Like, I, I've never, I've only, when I was a kid, I might have been shy. So I wasn't shy. I was, I was anxious because I always felt really weird. Yeah. But I naturally, I'm, um, 
an extrovert like I'm, I'm a yeah. chatty person yeah, and I'm a yeah. yeah bubbly I'd make friends at a fucking bus stop yeah, that's what yeah, I'm like yeah, and yeah. I'd chat to everyone and stuff but no, I don't get nervous just because no but you definitely nervous. do you come across very bubbly and mm. you're definitely contagious with like your conversation you get people chatting yeah and mm. I think as well I know we keep talking about what you've done on the telly but that doing with the uh, eating with the enemy that, I, lo- I love doing that, that like, good. you could tell your one is snapping because she knows she's wrong yeah and you're just like I'm not a bad person and every negative that she has and stereotypical thoughts she's having in her head they're like plastic surgery tell us a bit about her like who you were so what so I was I was paired up with this woman from the travelling community and um, she wasn't like she never she never like was rude or said anything bad and like, sorry you couldn't across it so the show the idea of the show is they, they pair two people with opposite views isn't yeah it? And the opposite views on the same on. subject or yeah. maybe they're from a similar background or it could be whatever now I didn't know it was going to be with a traveller I did not know until I got there who it was going to be and I si- I was just messaging Axe to do the show Axe what it was about reason why I done it is just to speak about subjects I'd feel passionate about yeah. now that could have been gay could have been surgery could have been travellers I, did, I didn't know what it was going to be so I was paired with this lady and she works for a travellers rights organisation now they're constantly funded all the time just to speak about racism towards travellers like I told you earlier in the interview they never talk about um, the chat the yeah. convo then yeah. but they never speak out about like LGBT travellers or how that can be difficult or whatever else like those types of subjects that I felt passionate about that's affected my life that I think needs to be spoke about in the public domain right so she already we already had a different view when it comes to that she admitted in the interview like that was true that even though she's got gay friends for some reason she, she just never includes it in her work she only talks about maybe travellers houses issues how travellers don't mm. have the same rights in society or whatever so we sat there and we had a conversation like about plastic surgery being gay being a traveller different views on religion sex outside of marriage all sorts of things I had like I'm the most open minded person I've got a friend who's a porn star mm. I actually have a friend who's a porn star so like mm. I don't care what you are or what your yeah, job what's is what's the number no it's like boy he's a gay yeah. boy do you want his number yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You biggest <laughs> mistake he ever made <laughs> he's a gay boy <laughs> but um <laughs> My point of even saying something like that is is that I'm interested in whatever you want to do, however you are as a person. I think it's brilliant, whatever job, role, whatever background you come from. Yeah. But, like, do you know, even away from her being a traveller, she was also from a different generation to me. Yeah, yeah. So you li- could see she was so close-minded going in, and you yeah. could tell you were chipping away. And it helped, it helped yeah, a you lot. Could def- you could tell she wanted to hold on to the stuff that she went in with. And you were chipping away at it and she was yeah. letting loose. And when I spoke to her like about how the subjects I've talked to you about affected me badly, like about like su- attempting suicide when I was like a teenager and like all of these sorts of things, she really understood then like why I feel the way I do about mm-hmm. the subjects that I do. It's not just about telling everyone I'll be yourself. It's about, I know like from having cousins that um, like are gay or feel different from the world you grew up in, we all can understand one another, but there's never enough awareness for anybody else in our like background or our community to understand us. It's not spoken about. So it really taught her that and hopefully that'll make a change obviously in our work going forward. And other than that, we really got along and we had a laugh and yeah. whatever. But that's what I got from it. I, well, any clip it's I've seen that you on the telly, I was like, this fella seems like a genuine bloke. He's bubbly, yeah. he's positive. You turn negatives into positives. Yeah. Like you could tell with her... She was really reserved. Was this the board who was talking about the Botox? Yeah. And then you and you're like, like, did you ever do your hair? This, this yeah, way. yeah. It's like, you wear your pink nails. I, I don't think you should change. Like, my mother's like that. Typical Irish mother. She's like, oh, God, God made you like that. Don't change. Yeah. And I'm like, go away and change what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, and you can tell. You're like, and you're not ashamed of it. You're like, yeah, I've my cheek done. I've this done. I've my yeah, ass done. And yeah, all, got my bum made bigger. Got my teeth done. I got my hair done. <laughs> yeah. Everything. I was meant to go like two you days. You've hair done when you're getting to finish. Oh, shut up. <laughs> 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 I'm getting my hair done. <laughs> I'm getting it done in, in like in August or whatever, if COVID allows me. Mm. But um, I, I think like with surgery, if somebody wants to have surgery, go and do it. But I don't think at 18, I think over 21. And once you do your research and stuff. Yeah, no, I yeah. definitely agree with you and all, but I'm, I'm just going to go back to the fact that you got, you portrayed yourself, you carried yourself very well there. Yeah. And even now, after being sent with you for what, like the last yeah. leading two or three hours. Yeah. 
you seem very genuine like I'd say yeah that, that fella who we seen on the telly is the fella who we sat across and talked yeah, yeah I'm yeah. always myself I, I would I'll be honest with you, I don't have the patience to be fake like if I'm on a television programme like I even remember when I first went into Big Brother tried to have a bit of a game plan that went out the window after about three days when your woman that I was arguing with turned me completely insane <laughs> well at that time I was 21 I was locked up in the house sometimes we're fueled by alcohol and whatever mm. and I regret none of it I wish I'd done more of it because it, it all went viral even now on TikTok people does those TikTok videos of me screaming and whatever yeah. and without all, all of those people things to argue. Yeah, <laughs> without all of those things I would not have continued doing television if I'd been kind of sensible on Big Brother but I'm glad I've gotten to do other shows afterwards where people have got to see me in a completely different light because shows like Big Brother and like MTV and like I went when I'd done a different show recently they can be really um trashy and whatever and that's okay because we've all got them sides to us but it's nice to sit down and talk about more serious topics mm, yeah also. and i think you're a great advocate though for Thank breaking you. the stigma around what it is to be a traveler yeah breaking the stigma around what it is to be gay and breaking the stigma around what it is to be from bali mon there we go <laughs> be from bali mon you can be whatever you want yeah <laughs> be, you can be whatever you want <laughs> if you're from bali mon <laughs> no but yeah you know, i had a great chat with you here Thank i really you. enjoyed it um we had a great laugh. Yeah, you're I a legend. <laughs> You've insulted the whole of bloody Ballymun. <laughs> yeah, sure, you're from bloody inner city. You're the third person from Ballymun on this podcast. Well, there you is go. He? He's obsessed with Ballymun. Billy McMahon and Willie Woy. Ah. Is your girlfriend from Ballymun? She's not bollocks. Well, but you're obviously obsessed Whoa, with Ballymun. Wexford. Where is she from? Wexford, yeah. Oh, but the posh down around there and that. I do, yeah. What's that place called in Wexford? They all go Lost to? Lair. No, the other oh, one. Like that, Something no. town. Court town. Court town. There yeah. we go. They're posh down there. She's not from down there, but we'll leave her at that. Yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, we thank you for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, having yeah. Me. yeah I hope you all enjoyed this. This was some roller coaster. Talking like. bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, take us out. Subscribe to this podcast for free on the Go Loud app. What you waiting for? Put your back in it. Just a little more. Cause you're waiting for it now. Till your body is in. Walk it hard and low. When you finish that. The hip knocker.